to go with the crowd. Give us the strength of your Spirit, that we may be proud to profess our faith in your Son. For those who are falsely accused, accused, those whose reputations are unjustly destroyed, and those who suffer imprisonment for crimes they did not commit, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. The second station. Jesus takes up his cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. So they took Jesus, and carrying the cross by himself, he went out to what is called the place of the skull, which in Hebrew is called Golgotha. What have we done to the Son of God? Bruised, lacerated, and bleeding, he accepts for us the cross that would bring both torment and victory. Bearing our own particular cross of sickness, tiredness, grief, is the way God invites us to triumph over sin and evil. God of eternal hope, you promise us an easy yoke and a burden which is light if we come to you. Sustain us in our sufferings under the strain of our responsibilities, under the stress of our daily routine. Stand by our side and stay close to us. The third station, Jesus falls for the first time. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Surely he has borne our infirmities and carried our diseases. Yet we accounted him stricken, struck down by God, and afflicted but he was wounded for our transgressions, crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the punishment that made us whole, and by his bruises we are healed. If only for a moment it seems as if God has been cut down to our size, as under the weight of the cross 
Jesus falls to the ground. It appears that all his work on earth is about to be undone. His teachings, his miracles, his reason for becoming one of us. This he accepts, knowing that to do the will of the Father can only lead to glory. God of patient endurance, lift us up when we are low, when we fall at the feet of despair, when sickness drags us down, and when we are toppled by our pride. Save us and raise us up. Fourth station, Jesus meets his mother. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Then Simeon blessed them and said to his mother Mary, This child is destined for the falling and rising of many in Israel, and to be signed that will be opposed to the inner thoughts of many will be revealed, and a sword will pierce your own soul too. Mary too shares the suffering of her son. The cross is laid upon her shoulders. The fingers of blame point at her. Yet her trust in God is constant. Let what you have said be done to me. Christ's passion is the source of our compassion. We are called to share the suffering of others. God of tenderness and compassion, be close to those who cry tears of pain. Encourage those who weep for their own sinfulness, that their sorrow may be turned into tears of joy. The fifth station, Simon helps Jesus carry his cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because, because by your holy, holy cross, cross you have, have redeemed, redeemed the world. world. As they led him away, they seized a man, Simon of Cyrene, who was coming in from the country, and they laid the cross on him and made him carry it behind Jesus. Although Simon was forced to carry Jesus' cross, there are many who help people carry their cross. 
we in turn are invited to that generosity of spirit which does not look idly on but grows through its service of others. Ever present Lord, help us to be your hands, your feet and your shoulders as we serve those here in need. May we speak your words of kindness and listen with attentiveness to those who claim our time. Help us, Lord, to be Simons, aiding others to carry their cross. the sixth station, Veronica wipes the face of Jesus. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have, you have redeemed the world. He had no form or majesty that we should look at him, nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by others, a man of suffering and acquainted with infirmity. And so no one from whom others hide their faces, he was despised, and we held him of no account. Tradition tells us that the face of Jesus, the image of the unseen God, was left on the cloth which Veronica used when she met Jesus. We too can see that same face in every act of kindness, every offer of support, and every work of mercy that is done for the sake of Christ Jesus. God, hidden from our eyes, imprint your likeness upon our hearts. Help us to recognize you in the faces of those who are despised marginalized and unloved. May we bring the light of your face to those in need. The seventh station, Jesus falls a second time. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by, by your holy, holy cross, cross you, you have, have redeemed, redeemed the world. world. Now that I have fallen, they gather around delighted. They crowd about to jeer at me. They take me by surprise, strike me, and tear me to pieces. They provoke me with their mockery and their jibes as they gnash their teeth at me. Continually falling and getting up again is the story of our sinful journey to God. 
Jesus, who was sinless and innocent, also has to make that effort to stand up once more and continue his journey to Calvary. No matter how many times we fall, each time we arise, we will encounter the love and mercy of God. Lord of the journey, we know how deeply we fall and how often we become discouraged by our own obstinacy and short-sightedness. Be with us on our pilgrimage of life, particularly when we fall. Reach out to catch us and raise us up in the warmth of your loving embrace. The eighth station, Jesus meets the women of Jerusalem. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because, because by your holy, holy cross, cross you have, you have redeemed, redeemed the, world. the world. A great number of the people followed him, and among them were women who were beating their breasts and wailing for him. But Jesus turned to them and said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. From the midst of his pain and anguish, Jesus holds out hope to the women of Jerusalem. Yet he warns them not merely to lament the awful spectacle, but to look deeply at the paradox of what is really happening, to realize what this means for posterity. We are the children of those women, and Jesus' call to repentance is made to us today. God of all truth, we acknowledge our sins and our faults. They're always before us. Give us the grace to see those ways which lead us out of darkness and grant us the wisdom to turn our steps towards your love. ninth station. Jesus falls a third time. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because, because by your holy, holy cross, cross you, you have, have redeemed, redeemed the, world. the world. Christ Jesus, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. The 
the indignity for Jesus falling for a third time is matched only by our own falling away from him. He freely chose the path of obedience and self-denial. We fall from him by our half-hearted following of the gospel, by our half-kept promises of fidelity, and putting our own comfort before our Christian duty. Lord, of the new and everlasting covenant, by our sins we have denied you three times and more. When we fall short of your calling, raise us up and give us the grace to put all our strength at the service of your will, that by being humbled we may be exalted in your glory. Tenth station, Jesus is stripped of his garments. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Then the soldiers of the governors took Jesus into the governor's headquarters, and they gathered the whole cohort around him. They stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him, and after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on his head. They put a reed in his right hand and knelt before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. Jesus is stripped of his right to life and of his right to belong. Abandoned by those who were close to him, he stands naked, mocked, and open to the gaze of those who would scorn him. Our challenge is to be stripped of all that comes between us and God, to let go of our unhealthy attachments, our prejudice, and our pretensions. God of every good, naked we come from our mother's womb, and naked shall we return to you. Help us to rid ourselves of what displeases you. Keep us firm in your love, and give us a heart that is open to the needs of all our brothers and sisters. The eleventh station, Jesus is nailed to the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because, because by your holy, holy cross, cross you have redeemed the, the world. world. 
two others who were criminals were led away to be put to death with Jesus. When they came to the place that is called the skull, they crucified Jesus there with the criminals, one on his right hand and one on his left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. As the pain of the nails shot through his body, Jesus could have chosen to come down from the cross. Instead, he chose to die between two criminals. Not to, the rea- not to react to those who taunted him and even asked the Father to forgive all who were implicated in this sorry spectacle. We can claim that same forgiveness, but we are challenged not to withhold it ourselves from others. The twelfth station, Jesus dies on the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because because by your holy holy cross cross you have redeemed redeemed the world. When it was noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. At three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, Lama Sabachthani, which means, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, Listen, he is calling for Elijah. And someone ran, filled a sponge with sour wine, put it on a stick, and gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to take him down. Then Jesus gave a loud cry, and breathed his last. Nailed to a tree, tormented by pain and racked with anguish, Jesus gives himself up to death. Arms outstretched, pinned down and immobile. He has been faithful to the end. Jesus has taken upon himself our sins and our sickness and has transformed them by the victory of his death in this act of obedience. We see unfold the mystery of our redemption. God of the living and the dead, in death your son put an end to the hold of sin sickness. Now nothing can separate us from your everlasting love. Help us to die to our old selves, that we may live the life of your Spirit, who makes us a new creation for the glory of your name.
the thirteenth station, Jesus is taken down from the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because, because by your holy cross, cross you have, have redeemed, redeemed the world. world. After these things, Joseph of Arimathea, who was a disciple of Jesus, though a secret one because of his fear of the Jews, asked Pilate to let him take away the body of Jesus. Pilate gave him permission, so he came and removed the body. Nicodemus, who had at first come to Jesus by night, also came, bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes, weighing about a hundred pounds. Once again, Jesus is cradled in human arms as on that first night in the stable in Bethlehem, wrapped in swaddling clothes and laid in a manger, but now his lifeless body. Yet it was with bewilderment, bewilderment that his mother and friends received that lifeless body. Why did this have to happen? It's as real for them as it is for us today. Those who suffer all over the world through injustice and aggression. We particularly think of the unjust suffering inflicted on the people of Ukraine. Suffering, death and disaster are not created by God. God of those who mourn, be our guide when we are lost our light in times of darkness. When tragedy overwhelms us, when death seems senseless and grief leaves us empty, sustain our belief that by dying, Jesus has destroyed our death and is the only meaning to our lives. The fourteenth station, Jesus is laid in the tomb. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because, because by your by holy, holy cross, cross you, you have, have redeemed, redeemed the, world. the world. Joseph of Arimathea brought a linen cloth and taking down the body, wrapped it in the linen cloth, and laid it in a tomb that had been hewn out of the rock. He then rolled a stone against the door of the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Jesus, saw where the body was laid.
The chilling silence of the tomb gives death a momentary air of victory. But death is about to lose its sting as Christ will emerge triumphant. He has fulfilled the plan formed long ago, and his obedience and patient endurance give meaning to our daily struggles. We will not remain buried forever under the weight of all that lays us low. Death has no power over us anymore. Christ has set us free. Ever watchful God, be our sure hope in times of doubt, an open hand in moments of mistrust, and our constant goal when all seems lost. As we contemplate Christ's tomb, we think of the graves that hold our loved ones. Death has no power over him, and our loved ones are embraced in God's eternal love. And we contemplate a 15th station because we know that death is not the end. We won't read that. We have journeyed with Jesus from the acceptance of his cross to his death on Calvary. The tomb could not hold Jesus who is the Lord of life. No sin, no sickness, no power can ultimately hold sway over us now that Jesus has risen from the dead. Even death has been conquered in the power of God's Spirit. We pray together as children of God. And as St. John told us in his writing, we are already the children of God, but what we are to be in the future has not yet been revealed. All we know is that when it is revealed, we shall be like him, because we shall see him as he really is. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And our next ceremony in the parish church here is tomorrow at 12 noon when the Polish chaplain to the diocese will gather with a huge congregation of Polish and Eastern European people carrying on a very sacred tradition for them the blessing of their food baskets that will take place at 12 noon. Of course, then at 9 p.m. we will have our Easter vigil, our celebration of Christ risen from the dead. I thank all of you for accompanying us, being with us tonight to accompany us on the journey of the Stations of the Cross. I thank Julie and Nula who enriched our prayers with their music and song. I thank 
Herbert, uh, Her, Herbert, Hubert, and Yvonne, and Joe, who went from station to station with the cross and with the candles. I thank Eugene, our deacon, for celebrating with us. And as we continue to contemplate on this Good Friday, the meaning of Jesus' death, we entertain in our hearts the hope that this gives us, and we accept the challenge in our minds to imitate Jesus in our dealings with each other. Not to contradict Monsignor John, but the next service is at 9 o'clock this evening. So if you're more than welcome to stay or to come back at 9 o'clock or join us virtually online as we continue to reflect on the story of the cross and we hear from different characters of that story. Thank you very much. Oh my Jesus.